Today, I'm going to be ranking every single Star Wars TV show on this tier list right here. And without further ado, let's get into it. Kicking this list off with an absolute slam dunk of a show, we have Star Wars The Clone Wars. And this is an easy S tier. Now, boys, look, this is such an obvious answer. If you disagree, if you think that Star Wars The Clone Wars isn't S tier, then I think, is that... I think I see one of my old friends over there. I think, oh, it, it is. That's Coco Melon over there. I think, I think you should probably go check him out for a little bit if you want. Because this is obviously not the place for you. Because Star Wars The Clone Wars easiest S tier of my entire life. It is one of my favorite Star Wars projects ever. The characters, the episodes, the storylines, they're all so good. And the best part is, the more you watch it, the better it gets. Now, season one, I'll admit, I'll be the first to admit, it's a little rocky. It's not exactly the greatest show ever. It's a little kiddie. It's a little geared towards kids, and as it should be, it's a kid show. But season two on, as it extends onward, it becomes more and more gritty and realistic, and they've got some pretty dark themes in there, boys. There's a scene where Ventress, like, goes over, stabs a clincher with his lightsaber, I think, and then kisses him as she pulls lightsaber out and he dies. There's something like that. I'll, I'll put the actual clip in so you know whether or not I'm telling the truth to you, but it's pretty dark sometimes. There's some pretty pretty intense episodes. Aside from that, we also got some of the greatest characters in all of Star Wars. You know, your Cad Banes, your Savage Press, the redemption of Darth Maul. I mean, who could forget that? Ahsoka Tano. The list just goes on and on for how amazing this show is. It is truly impressive what Dave Filoni achieved with this. So that's I'm very, very comfortable putting that S tier. All right, coming up next is another very easy placement, and that is the one, the only Bad Batch. And Bad Batch, I'm very comfortable putting in C tier. Now, boys, if you've watched this channel before, you know that a long, long time ago, in a galaxy far away, no, I'm just kidding, in this very own galaxy of ours, I also ranked every Star Wars show from worst to best. Almost a year and a half ago, December 1st, 2022. It's 2024. Now, first of all, there's been a lot of new shows that came out with shoes. A lot of new shows that came out since then. There's been Ahsoka, there's been Acolyte, there's been more seasons of Bad Batch, and the list goes on and on. I made this video when I was a young pup. Speaking of young pups, dog word, what do you think? They do it off a soul site, you boys ain't making no noise. Always love getting his advice, but I made it when I was a young lad, and I was naive, and I had a lot of bad opinions, and even more importantly, you might know, notice that this video is done in order, like, it is in, in, in a numerical order, is what I'm trying to say. It's like, number 11, resistance, number 10, like, whatever it was, and then I go down and down, and that kind of puts me in a pickle in a lot of places, because when I get to, you know, numbers 5 through 1, they're all some great shows, but I have to put them somewhere. That eventually left me placing, well, I'll just cut to the chase and show you what I have for my number 2 show. Alright, if you're older than the age of 7, and you can do basic math, you probably have some idea what's coming up next. Yep, you guessed it. Coming in at number 2 is The Bad Batch. I don't think- See- that's the problem with my numerical list and my obvious youth and immaturity, is the fact that Bad Batch is not the second best show in Star Wars. I'm sorry I break it to you, it's simply not. So that is why this time, I've opted to go for a little bit more of an easier ranking method, and, again, I'm doing this list again so I can, you know, go back to old Joe and fix some of his mistakes. That video is on my channel if you want to go find it later and see how young and naive and stupid I was to be Anne Frank, but here we are, and we're at the Bad Batch, and the Bad Batch is a solid B tier show. Now guys, let's be honest, the main reason for this is because Bad Batch has this style of show where for some reason they have, they decided to do this thing where they have like three episodes in the entire season of plot pertaining to an actual over, overarching storyline. And every single other episode has nothing to do with anything and all it does is absolutely waste our time to take us on random side quests for characters that to be honest are not really worth it for us to see that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, okay? Sh I'm just gonna say it. I'm just gonna say it. It is very annoying how, how most of the Bad Batch episodes have nothing to do with an overarching goal. It's just like, oh, oi, Sid needs us to go get some surprise from random planet in the middle of bomb freaking nowhere. Oi, boys, come on, let's go. And they all kind of follow in suit in their happy little Bad Batch lines and they go do whatever mission it is. Oh no, there's an obstacle in our way. Oh no, maybe, maybe if we're lucky, the showrunners will give us Ventress or they'll give us Cad Bane or some random piece of nostalgia to win us over. And it's just very annoying. Look, I like my shows to either have a purpose or to do what Clone Wars does. Clone Wars, you might notice, does not have an overarching purpose. There's not one goal of the Clone Wars besides to win the Clone War, obviously. But what Clone Wars does do is it has actual storylines, and they're not very long. You don't need to have super long ones, but it'll have three or four episodes where it's one story that it follows for those three or four episodes. And the next episode after those, that storyline ends, it's more episodes about that storyline. You know what I mean? You feel like you're actually watching a story. Whereas Bad Batch is one episode, many stories with the lowest possible stakes and the same characters over and over again. It gets very repetitive. Now, that being said, Bad Batch is on, is on B tier for a reason. Bad Batch has some great stories. Some of the stuff with Emperor Palpatine and shutting down the cloning was awesome. The Crosshair storyline in season three and season two was really good. I really liked that. 
So I think that is where Bad Batch really shines, when it's actually going for a goal, and they're not just messing around in some random outer rim planet doing odd jobs for Sid. I'm very comfortable putting the Bad Batch in B tier. That is that is what my thoughts on the matter are. <laughs> ah, do you see what I see, gentlemen and ladies? Because what I see is an absolute piece of freaking garbage! <laughs> Ah, uh, the Acolyte. I did not have you when I made my first tier list of the Star Wars TV shows. Now, you might notice on this list, boys, that I did not put an F tier, because I'm stupid. Let's do a little, uh, adjustment making right now. Bum. Bum. Bum! That's right. That is where the Acolyte belongs. Now, look, if you watch a lot of, like, watch a lot of, like, Critical Drinker, for example, I don't have the same problems with the show that he does, because, first of all, the whole thing, I understand, I'm not a huge fan of forced diversity in any context, because I think it completely destroys the point of diversity. It should be natural, it should not exist for the point of being diverse, you know what I'm saying? But even, in, I think diversity has way more of a place in Star Wars than it does in, like, historical dramas, for example. You know what I mean? Like, for example, Cleopatra got reviewed bomb because Cleopatra was made black in the show, and Cleopatra was from, like, Macedonia or something. There was no reason historically for her to be black, so the show or the movie or whatever it was got a terrible rating. Now, look, I, I don't- Star Wars is actually an exception to that, I think. I think Star Wars, if there's any place to have exceptional amounts of diversity for the sake of diversity, Star Wars is your place to do it. There's aliens everywhere, there's, like, no real system of confirmation for what someone should be. I do not mind that. The real problem with the Acolyte is the show, whether or not you care about that, is boring as freaking frick. It is unwatchable. It's, it's like offensively boring. If there's anything the show's offensive about, it's how boring it is. They spent like 180 million dollars on this show. 180 million. That's like 27 million per episode. More than that, probably. My math's not that good. I didn't do that great in school when it came to math. Sue me. But they spent a lot of money on the show. And you think with all, with all that money and all that creative control, you really could have made a better show. You really just could have because because the show right now there's almost no redeeming qualities. It's not fun to watch, it's not interesting, the dialogue feels forth- it somehow feels more hurtful than this, the prequel dialogue. Because the prequel dialogue, I know, at least you know, it's kind of a joke. Like it's, okay, George Lucas, he, he can't write dialogue, sure. This is like, okay, you know all the mistakes, you have access- you're Disney, you have access to the best writing teams in the world, and this is what you come up with? Anyway, I'm not gonna stay on this too long, because again, I know if you're watching this, then you've probably seen the Acolyte, know that I'm right, and see, seen the absolute- terrible reviews that it has on Rotten Tomatoes. I think I think it's the lowest show in history. It's either the lowest it's definitely the lowest Star Wars product in history in terms of review. And it's also I think maybe the lowest show. Don't know about that. You can fact check me. But that's that. <laughs> that's crazy. Alright, next up is Tales of the Empire. And Tales of the Empire, I'm actually a little sad about boys. I'm actually a little sad about because Tales of the Empire had a real potential to be an awesome show. It really did. And you want to know how I know that? Because Tales of the Jedi, which is right here is probably an A tier show, and honestly, I'm considering putting an S tier. Tales of the Jedi is a beautifully done show that explores characters that we all want to know about, like Count Dooku and Mace, uh, Qui-Gon Jinn, not Mace Windu, I mean a little bit Mace Windu, but Qui-Gon Jinn explores all these characters a little bit more, we get to see more of their backstory. Uh, Ahsoka, it tells, us, so it tells us how Ahsoka survived and what she did with the Inquisitor, all that, and it's very interesting and very well done. I, I really do enjoy Tales of the Jedi a lot, which is why it's so sad to me that I'm putting Tales of the Empire at like, Maybe a C tier. I'm, I'm just, I'm sorry. It's just not that great. I want, I've always wanted to see what happened to Barris Afi. And it, okay, it makes, it kind of makes sense that she became an Inquisitor. But what you don't do for Barris Afi, what you don't do is make her a sad, remorseful character who all of a sudden wants to do the right thing. She blew up a Jedi temple and was gonna let her best friend take the fall for it. That is not a good thing to do. That is not a righteous thing to do. That's not a moral thing to do. So the fact that all of a sudden she decides to become this moral beacon or, or try to do the right thing is like, okay, I understand what you're going for. But there's better ways to do it. You can make her less of a black and white character. You can make her a little gray when it comes to these things. I don't care. Another thing was that there was just so much less content in, in, in this than there was in Tales of the Jedi. And the episodes were all shorter, and there were less episodes in general, I'm pretty sure. I think there were less episodes. So I really was unhappy and unsatisfied with Tales, Tales of the Empire. And it was really, you know, a missed opportunity. It could have gone to so many great heights. Because it was riding off the wind of Tales of the Jedi. And it just didn't. It just didn't have that oomph behind it. So, sad, but it is what it is. Next up, we have Ewoks, and boys, it's time for, uh, you know, in general tier lists, you never, n you know, get through a whole video without adding a row. And we're gonna add the never watched, bum bum bum. And you guys always roast me for this, you always act like I'm supposed to watch every third-rate Star Wars TV, TV show that came out in 1984, or whenever Ewoks came out, I'm sure you Star Wars nerds will know. I haven't, I'm just gonna break it to you, I haven't. And you know what? I haven't watched droids either. This is droids right here, so I cannot rank them. I gotta be honest, they look like kind of crash. They look like George Lucas cash grabs. You know, the traditional Baby Yoda, Ewok, 
you know, cash grabs. They're just trying to make some money off these shows. And I really do not think they look that great. And to be honest, I haven't really heard much raving, you know, absolute love for these shows from the Star Wars fans. So I'm not convinced that these are absolute <laughs> magnum opuses of the Star Wars name. I gotta be honest. So I'm just gonna put that there. And while we're here, I have to put Visions too. I've seen one episode of Visions and it was all right. This wasn't for me. To be honest, it doesn't look that bad, but it's just not, not something I'm interested in, so I never watched it. And I guess if we're being fair, we really should put Star Wars Resistance there too, because I have not watched Star Wars Resistance, but if you watch my last video about ranking the Star Wars TV shows, I did put this absolutely freaking dead last. And you want to know why? Because I'm very, very positive that a TV show about the Resistance, one of the least interesting periods in Star Wars history, I'm very positive <laughs> that that TV show will not be good. I'm just positive. But hey, I'm sure someone in the comments is going to have watched it. Let me know what you think. I'm going to leave it and never watch and be very generous because I'm very tempted to put it. My FFFFF button trigger finger is getting real itchy. You know what I'm saying? But I'm going to leave it and never watch. I'm going to have, have some self-restraint. Pull out a David Goggins and have a little discipline. Never watch the safe. Next up is Rebels. <laughs> and you guys are going to freaking kill me. Because, okay, it's time. Once again, if I, if I it's, it, it can never be a Jared video if I'm talking about TV shows. And I don't acknowledge that once again. I have never actually seen seasons three and four of Rebels, and that is when Rebels gets very good. I have to acknowledge, I've never actually seen that, and I'm desperately sorry. I know you guys have been telling me this since I made that last video in December of 2022, and I acknowledge, I really should have watched it, I really should have, but I have seen Rebels seasons one and two, and I gotta be honest. Oh, hi, dog word. Oh, look how happy he is. Oh, look how... Hi, buddy. Okay, sorry, I'm getting off topic. I have seen seasons one and two. I gotta be honest, way worse than Clone Wars. I, I, I'm right now, based on only off seasons one and two, I gotta put it like B tier. Most of the characters are very good. Ezra Bridger is very annoying in my opinion. I really think Ezra Bridger is not a great character in seasons one and two. And this is where my lack of knowledge comes in because I know he gets way better, way better in seasons three and four. And I know, I know they introduced Thrawn and I know they bring back a lot, bring a lot of plots and cool ideas. So because of that, I'm gonna put it in Never Watch because I know that if I watched it, I'd probably put it in A tier and S tier, but out of complete fairness, I have to put it in Never Watched. No, I don't have to do that. Why do I have to do that? That's stupid. I've watched two of the seasons. So, you know what? I'm going I'm, I'm to make a logical assumption based on the evidence provided to me. I'm going to put this in A tier. Because even if season three and four were great, I still do not think they would be as good as Clone Wars, but I can see it being very good. So I'm going to leave it in A tier. I think that's fair. And I think a lot of you are going to want S tier, and that's fine. I understand that, so... Man, right now it's looking like a lot of shows that I've never watched. And I promise you that is just pure optical illusion. Because if any of you watched Ewoks and Droids, shows that both premiered in like 1984 or something like that, you are very impressive. I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of my older older fans are going to have watched those because they simply grew up with that. And back then, they're probably desperate for any Star Wars thing they can get. But if you're, you know, under the age of like 25 and you've actually seen those shows, consider me wildly impressed because I think a lot of us haven't. <laughs> so we're going to leave them and never watched. But... All that's to say is number, I don't have a number, but coming next is The Mandalorian. And Mandalorian, first my heart to do so, because Mandalorian Season 1 is like A-S tier, I gotta be honest. But the show, I, I've talked about this before, the show starts off really good, Season 1, and it just declines. It just falls off so hard. I gotta put it B tier, because the second two seasons are very uninteresting, pretty boring, and they're obviously just grasping for scrap, scraps. I mean, it really is. Grab anything on the Star Wars name that's ever been successful and squeeze it and wring its neck for all the money it's worth, you know? So, I'm gonna put it B tier. If it was just season one, I'd put it S tier. But it's not. There's seasons two and three, so I gotta put it B tier. But you know what I gotta do? I also gotta grab some water. While I'm getting some water, subscribe, by the way. Because this has been a great video so far. And I'm back, baby! Woo! Got my water, got my dog, and let's get back to the list. Coming up next is Ahsoka, the Ahsoka TV show. Ah, delicious. Jedward, sponsored by water. Go pick some up today. I think Ahsoka, honestly, the more I think about it, the more I think Ahsoka should be C tier. Not a ton of redeeming qualities, and it's just a very middle of the road show for me. Ah, Andor. Now, Andor is another one of those shows that fell victim in my video where I last ranked the Star Wars TV shows. It fell victim to me having to make a numerical list, or deciding to make a numerical list, because I could only put so many at the top, you know? So I ended up putting Andor at like number five or something, which I, I do not think is accurate, but. You know, I figured the shows that I wanted above that, I had to put above that. So, this is a better format for ranking Star Wars TV shows and ranking a lot of things in general. Anyway, that's kind of a tangent. What I'm trying to say is Andor is definitely A tier. Andor is one of the better Star Wars creations in a long time. I, the more I've gotten older, the more I've appreciated a grittier Star Wars TV show with like, you know, real threats and real stakes and real characters that could die. Because we know Andor's going to die. And there's no reason that any of the characters that he surrounded himself with are going to live. Because they're not, you know, huge Star Wars characters that are going to live forever. 
it is sad that this show did not get more viewership because now I think they're making a season two, but to be honest, I I'd be surprised if it ever actually went through. Because from what I can tell, this show could just not bring in the audience the way that, you know, Ahsoka or The Mandalorian could. So, good show. Really good show. Great characters. Really good story. I would put that 8 tier. I really like Andor. And I regret in my last video putting it at number 5 or whatever I put it at. And speaking of great TV shows, we have The Book of Boba Fett! Yes! Holy cannoli, we're saved! Book of Boba Fett is an absolute F tier show. To me, it's spit in the face of Boba Fett in every single way. Because for some reason, the show decided, you know what would be a good chorus for this ruthless bounty hunter that everyone likes for his total mercilessness? Let's make him a nice guy. Let's make him have fun and be happy and want to rule with respect and have a good time and not be intimidating and ruin his character. It really was annoying. I wanted to see a cold, heartless Boba Fett. I didn't want to see Boba Fett intent on becoming a better man for no real reason. I think whatever argument you can make for this new Boba Fett, new Boba Fett being better, this is completely over, overshadowed by the fact that nobody wanted to see it and he would have been better as a mean, like, you know, tough Boba Fett. I think everyone wanted to see that. You know when the side bounty hunter, Fennec Shand, you know that when Fennec Shand is a tougher and cooler character than Boba Fett, you know, Boba Fett, you know you're in trouble because Boba Fett should be top dog. And he was overshadowed by his, like, sidekick, by Fennec Shand. They also brought in Cad Bane for some freaking reason. I cannot figure out why. It's not like these characters had a rivalry or anything. It's like, oh, oh, we're getting to the end of the Boba Fett season, guys. What do we freaking do, Disney executive team? Oh, I know. Bring in known legacy character that has had three interactions with this Boba Fett character, maybe in his lifetime, potentially. Bring him in and have Boba Fett kill him. Finally, one last thing to, you know, really put the icing on the cake. You know that it's bad when the Mandalorian has two whole episodes where Boba Fett is not in it in Boba Fett's show. There's like six episodes of Boba Fett in here and two episodes that are just completely about the Mandalorian with Boba Fett not appearing once. This is a good place to put it. Right there with the accolade. I do not like either of these shows. Obi-Wan Kenobi. No, Obi-Wan Kenobi, I also really did not like. It's been a while since I watched it because I watched it when it first came out. And again, I, I really did not enjoy it at all. One of the big problems with the show was it was trying to give way too much screen time to Reaver, a character who I was very uninterested in and did not care about that much, and whose character in general did not make a lot of sense to me. She's a very wishy-washy, flippity-floppity character when it came to morality. She was like, oh, oh, I'm trying to, trying to kill Darth Vader, but the second that fails, I'm going to go kill Luke Skywalker anyway as a child. For no reason. Why do you want to kill Luke Skywalker? I, I do not understand. You try to kill Darth Vader. Darth Vader, you cannot kill it because obviously he's way better than you. And I will say, he and it, him and Reva was a cool duel. I will give it that. But when you try to kill Darth Vader and it doesn't work, why is your first thought, let me go kill an infant on Tatooine who Darth Vader doesn't know exists? It does not make sense to me. It's not logically consistent. And then when Obi-Wan shows up, he's like, hey, Reva, I, you're, I understand. You're okay. What the frick do you understand, old Ben? What, what is there to understand here? She's trying to kill Luke Skywalker for no reason. It, it was just really annoying to me. And honestly, one of the things that really pissed me off was how much it was about Leia. When I think of an Obi-Wan show, I do not think of something that, something that needs Princess Leia intrinsically coming in as a nine-year-old. And if anything, it makes the canon weaker. Because now, when Obi-Wan Kenobi sees Princess Leia on the Death Star ten years later, it's kind of weird that she doesn't, you know, care about him more, or think about him more, or know about him more. Her, her best reaction is like, oh, he's served by my father in the Clone Wars, not, oh, you saved me from those pirates and Inquisitors when I was nine. It really was not a good show in my opinion. It was slightly better than Book of Boba Fett because there were some good things about it. There was some good to see some old... Honestly, Ewan McGregor, I'm going to be happy if Ewan McGregor's in it. I like Ewan McGregor and I think it was good to see him in his element and he's obviously very happy to be there. Now, before we get to this next one and this very last one, it, it, is, my, it is my sadness to report to you boys. I have to show you something from my old video. My old video that I made two years ago. And this is why I'm making a new one because I deeply regret some of the things I said. Let's go check it out. Let's go check this out. Oh, by the way, quick side note, I know that there are a lot of niche Star Wars shows, like that uh, 2D Clone Wars micro series, whatever thingamajig, but I won't be including things like that on this list, because there are about three and a half people in the entire world who have actually watched those, and thank the maker, I am not one of them. Alright, glad that's cleared up. On to number eight. Number- <sighs> So, as you see in that, uh, in my opinion, honestly, embarrassing st statement of mine, I not only said I haven't watched a show, I kind of clown people who have. And I got a lot of hate for that in the comments. Holy cow. I did not, I genuinely did not know so many people had watched that. Look, top comment. OG Clone Wars was amazing. And, like, and this is just raving over OG Clone Wars. So a lot of you have watched that. I was wrong. A lot of you have watched that. My bad. My bad. The show genuinely does not look that bad. I still have not watched it, but I tried to watch a couple episodes. It's not, it's not something I love. I think the Clone Wars TV show is better than this one, obviously. But if you've watched it, I, I'm glad you've watched it. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I, however, have not watched it. So I'm forced to put this. Sorry, really quick. Let me just full screen this. And let me put this in the never watched show. So this is it. This is my Star Wars TV show tier list. I think it's very accurate, boys. And if you like this video, I think you're going to love this video right here, where I ranked every Star Wars character I could beat in a fight. And believe me, boys, check out these guns. Check out these guys. I can take them in a fight. So check that out right now. Thanks for watching. It's good to be back, and I'll see you later, boys. Have a good one.